Lord God, it is a joy and a privilege and something that we could never thank you enough for, Lord God, that we are able to gather under the banner of Jesus. Lord, that we would actually even know you, Jesus, as the Lord and Savior of our lives is a gift that's far too wonderful to even be able to express. And uh, Lord, I, I pray we would, we would never forget the beauty and the wonder of, that, of this, this great gift that you have given us in being able to know you and being known by you and being able to know you. I pray we would, as we, as we connect with you today and connect with each other in this very different way, I pray we would celebrate that, Lord God. We would celebrate you. You would be lifted up. You would be a, a, your name, Jesus, would be a banner that is, is, is flown high above um, each of our lives, Lord God. We, we really trust that you'll be glorified, that you'll be honored in all we do today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome, guys. So um, I was just uh, reminded of um, a story in Genesis chapter 16. And uh, um, uh, Sarah and, and Abraham were, were unable to conceive. Um, and they were uh so so they made their own plan and and they and sarah said well why don't you take uh, hagar to be your wife and and you can and we can have our family you know through her and so um and so that happened and she fell pregnant and then sarah became angry with her and, and mistreated her and um and and so in genesis chapter 16 she she uh, ran away and she ran off um into the wilderness and um she she uh, then was approached by an angel of the Lord. Um, and I'm, I'm in verse eight. And, and uh, he said to Hagar, slave of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? What an interesting question. Maybe that's a question we need to be asking ourselves this morning. Where have we come from and where are we going? Remembering, celebrating where we've come from, celebrating what God has done for us, but considering where we are going with him. She said, I'm running away from my mistress, Mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, go back to your mistress and submit to her authority. The angel of the Lord said to her, I will greatly multiply your offspring and they will be too many to count. The angel of the Lord said to her, you have conceived and will have a son. You will name him Ishmael for the Lord has heard your cry of affliction. This man will be like a wild donkey. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand will be against him. He will settle near all his relatives. So she named the Lord who spoke to her. You are El Roy, she said, for in this place I've actually seen the one, have I actually seen the one who sees me? That is why the well there is called Bir Lahai Roy. It is between Kadesh and Bered. And, uh, that, that that name of of the well, the Abir Lahai Roy, is is the the well of the living one who sees me, and I just felt an encouragement from the Lord this morning that that God is inviting us to come to this well, that uh, us uh, who who know Jesus, that that there is open access to this well of the living one who sees me, and I just felt that that en encouragement of of that name of God, the one who sees us. Um, that, that today, our God, that we are gathering to worship and to celebrate, he is alive, first of all. He's not dead. He's not some stone idol like described in uh, Isaiah 44. He's not something that's carefully carved from a piece of wood. He's, he's not made up by man and, and invented by man, but he is the living God. And he invites us to come to this well and to drink deeply of the well of the one who sees me. And I, I just... Yeah, I felt an encouragement that, that wherever you are today, that, that God sees you. He sees you. He knows you uh, exactly where you are. He is the, the living God who sees you. And, um, and so as we come today and as we gather, um, you know, whether we we watching on Facebook Live or we are here on Zoom, um, or perhaps you watch the recording of this a bit later, wherever you are and, and, and as you engage with, with what's happening here this morning, uh, God is the one who sees you, and and there is a well that is open that is invited for you to come and drink um, of uh, from Him. And so, I just encourage you to do that, to drink freely this morning. And um, as we go into worship, just consider that, consider who who God is, and uh, consider where you have come from and where you're going. Okay, wonderful. 
Um, Melly's going to um, kick us off with some worship. Thank you, Shirley, for preparing it.
Thank you, Lord, that we have been adopted by you, Lord God, into your family. That you, your purpose from the beginning of time, as we read in Ephesians, Lord God, was that we would be adopted as your children and into your family. And we thank you that as children of yours, Lord God, we have this freedom, we have this liberty, we have this joy, Lord God. And, and we just are uh, in awe of that this morning. And, and we love you and we celebrate you, Lord. And so we thank you for this time of worship. And we thank you, Lord God, for the message that you've put on Debbie's heart. And we pray as she shares with us this morning that uh, it, 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 as she speaks, Lord God, you would do the work that you do inside of us. Holy Spirit, we, we open our hearts to you, the, the one who counsels us, the one who guides us, the one who teaches us, who strengthens us. And uh, we open our hearts and our lives to you and, and really ask that you would have your way with us this morning. Amen. Thank you, Shirley, for that uh, worship. Thank you, Millie and Debbie, for coordinating that. Debs, thank you for, again, preparing something this week. Uh, it's been, uh, the last two weeks have been a, a wonderful journey as you've been uh, encouraging us and indeed challenging us. Uh, and so we, we just uh, yeah, are open to what God has laid on your heart this morning. Go for it. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, Trust that you're all well. Thank you, Trevor. I see that hand. Do you want to give your life to the Lord, Trevor? <laughs> Salvation <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. Um, it's good to see you all again this Sunday. And it's lovely to have Melly set it up so I can have all the faces on my screen. It's like I'm preaching at the front of the church. Um, and yeah, it's lovely to have you all. It's lovely to see you, Bridget. Trust that you are well and recovering from your, your um, hospital experience. And there's quite a few others that I don't know on the screen, but welcome. It's good to have you here this morning with us. Today, um, I've entitled this Be Strong. It's, I feel it's a word of encouragement to us all. There's been a lot over the last two weeks that I think People can go and dig and mine in um, and just ask the Lord, what is he saying to you? So I'm going to start this morning's um, preach with a video clip and we're going to give you a testimony. And then we're going back to the book of Haggai, the last part of chapter two of something that I want to share with you. Okay, Millie, thanks. You might be wondering where I'm going with this, but I want to give you a testimony about our home group in 2016, during the time where the, of the introduction of the children into the church service, where we actually no longer had a children's church, and church was to be all together. Our home group was vehemently against this introduction. And yes, you might say that's a strong word, yes, we were very, very anti this. And it came up at every Connect group meeting and we were really, really unhappy. As the leaders of the group at that time, we spoke to the eldership and even the broader North Hills Church were very aware of our feelings. And the elders' response to us was continually that they felt that God had told them to do this. Well, the whole group was actually miserable, totally miserable. And after our final interaction <laughs> with the leadership, yeah, I can see you laughing, Richard and Sheila. <laughs> after our final interaction with the, the eldership on this topic, our whole home group had almost decided to begin looking for a new home. And that actually means we were going to leave 
a group. There had been people that had left before from the group, but there was about 10 of us left. And it would have made, meant that we made an exit. At almost the last meeting where we were discussing this, towards the end of the meeting, James Nike had been sitting curled up on the couch. He just looked up and he said, I feel that God is telling us to be pillars. And the room went silent. For a moment, we just sat there. God had spoken. All of us felt that God had spoken. So we continued the meeting and we just interrogated and pulled out what do pillars do? What are you telling us to do, God? And you know what pillars do? They're absolutely silent. God was telling us, shut up and stand. Pillars don't move around. <laughs> I can see the allies are enjoying this. <laughs> this is the fruit of their labors. <laughs> Um, and they just stand. The whole church moves around pillars. Pillars don't move. You don't have an opinion. You don't have anything. But you stand there and you support what the building at the time. You support the body. You support everything. As a group that night, God asked us to consider our ways. God asked us to burn our boat. He asked us to burn our opinions, our feelings, everything that we knew and understood, our old ways of thinking about church programs and what we had grown up with. Our lives had benefited from these programs and we wanted other people to benefit from them. But God was not saying that the old was wrong. He was just asking us to move on and not to take all of that with us into the now because he was preparing the church for the things that we were that were ahead and he was asking us not to miss what he was doing you see all the way back then our eldership knew where we were sort of going but god had placed it on their hearts to actually bring the children in <laughs> and haven't we benefited from that now with our children being at home with us? Well, we don't have children at home anymore. But even then, we've benefited. God spoke very, very clearly about what we had to leave behind for ourselves. You see, we wouldn't have been able to take all of that onto a yacht. God can't put new wine into old wineskins. We can't keep going back to Egypt for the leeks and the garlics. It's not saying that the time there was bad. It was good. It was fruitful. But he's saying that there is a new place for us to go. And the video of Burn, it was, it's very apt. And thank you to she, Richard and Sheila and to the Mackenzies. Actually, the Mackenzies didn't know that you had shared this. And it was the same video that they had sent us. You see, as a home group, there was much fruitfulness that has actually come from us and our obedience to being just pillars. It didn't come without tears. It didn't come without frustration. And it didn't come without hankering after the things that we knew. But God changed our hearts. That night when James said, I think God is saying we need to be pillars, we had to consider our ways as individuals and as a collective, and let God begin the process of Psalm 51. God, create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit in me. Do not banish me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me and sustain me by giving me a willing spirit. Over the last two weeks, God has been asking us to consider our ways. Why? We are his bride, Revelations 19.7, and his bride has to prepare herself. We are a royal priesthood, 1 Peter 2.5, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You see, God made an investment in us. His, he put his Holy Spirit inside of us, and he wants to see the righteous acts of the priesthood of all believers outworked for his purpose. 
He wants that desperately for all of us. That's why he's encouraging us. In the last part of Haggai, there's another triplet of words. It says, be strong. Be strong, Joshua. Be strong, all you people of the land. Well, it should have been Zerubbabel first. This is the Lord's declaration. Work, for I am with you. The declaration of the Lord of armies. This is the promise I made to you when you came out of Egypt and my spirit is present among you. Don't be afraid. From this day on, think carefully. Is there any seed left in the granary? These are my thoughts here. Do you still have an inward faith? Do you still believe in me, Father God? The vine, the fig, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yet produced. You see, if we have faith, these fruits will be produced, the outward, and people will be able to see the outward faith that we have on the inside. The world's not seeing these clearly yet, but from this day on, I will bless you. See, God is busy helping us individually and the church to work out our salvation and the world will see these fruits. I really feel that God is speaking clearly to us as a church about our future, and he's not finished with us yet. He's not finished giving us songs, dreams, making his word alive, reminding us of his promises, calling us to a greater level of righteousness. He's asking us not to hold back. He's calling us to love him with all our being, because he has greater things ahead for us to do. Things that right now you might feel are impossible, but they're not for him. He's calling us to be strong. That means the leadership in communities as individuals. Be strong, be strong, be strong, all you people of the land. This is God's declaration. He's repeatedly asking us as individuals and as a community to seek his kingdom and his righteousness, as in Matthew 6.33. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there are greater things ahead. I'm preparing each one of you, and I've been doing that over the years. Last week, we discussed all of those things that God has been preparing in our hearts and what he's laid down. You see, God's not finished with North Hills, just because we have to meet like this. And what... It, the, what the future is, I don't know, but he wants you to know that everything that you've been dreaming and believing, he's got it. All the words, all the prophecies, all the things that he's spoken of over your lives, God's got it and he will outwork it. Ephesians 1.14 says, God has made, this is from the CBS, I think it is, God has said that he has made a down payment of the Holy Spirit in us. That means he's invested in you. And what he's invested is the wine, the fig, the pomegranate, and the olive tree. But you see, they've not produced it. God's been waiting for this time. But I feel that from this time, and I believe that we're gonna to begin to see these things outworked. I sat and I thought about what was the vine, the fig, the pomegranate and the olive tree. What did they mean to me as a person? And what did I feel that they meant to us at North Hills? When you have vines, grapevines, Richard's got grapevines at his house. There's often an abundance of fruit and it's sweet and it can't actually be resisted by the world. You see, over this time, we've considered our ways We've been faithful. It's like the spies that went into Canaan. They came back. They actually couldn't hold the fruit by one person. They carried them on sticks, and there were two people carrying those great bunches of grapes. You see, God has for us abundance and blessings that will be so great. They will, we will be able to testify of his greatness, his faithfulness, and his glory. People will be able to see it. You know, in biblical times, grapes were very much like our sugar today. And when they pressed down the grapes in a wine press, a, a syrup, well, it wasn't a syrup then, but a juice was produced. And for those of you that are chefs, I'm really sorry if I get my terminology wrong here, but 
if you take that wine, the grape juice, and you reduce it by boiling it, it becomes like treacle. And that was what was used as a sweetener. And it's called grape honey. You see, God says that people will taste and see that the Lord is good. People will taste of your lives. And blessed is the man that trusts in him. That's from Psalm 38, verse 4. You see, God, people will come to North Hills because they will be able to taste and they will be able to see that God is good because of the obedience of this church. We will, I really feel that we will be part of bringing restoration to our land because we've learned to love one another, as in John 15, 12. This will lead to peace, restoration, and happiness. And much like in Micah 4, verse 4, each person will sit under his grapevine and under his fig tree with no one to frighten him. The figs, very similar to that of the vine, but I see with the figs a new level of companionship and friendship. Much like in Zechariah 3, verse 10, in that day, each of you will invite your neighbor to sit under your vine and your fig tree, declares, declares the Lord. You see, God's done much fruit, much work in your lives, and there's going to be much fruit from your grapevine and your fig tree, not a single tree that normally people see as the church, but it's in our individual lives that God has done the work. The pomegranate. I like pomegranates. I like figs too, and I like grapes. There's much said about pomegranates. But for me, pomegranates are really beautiful. When you actually open them up and you look at all those pips, they're just like jewels. They're absolutely gorgeous. And they're full of seeds. There's, there's a lot of talk or um, about how many seeds and for the people that do the Israel thing, it's about the 300 and something, 600 and something odd seeds, but I'm not going there. From a scientific point of view, you can have anything from 160 seeds to 1,300 odd seeds, and the average is about 600 and something odd seeds. So it can be many. You can have few, or you can have through a thousand odd seeds in a pomegranate. But I see those seeds that God has placed in us from Galatians 5.22. We will abound in love, in joy, in peace, in patience, in kindness, in goodness, in faithfulness, and self-control, because God has laid those down in us. The olive tree, phew, last night I was still writing at about midnight, trying to condense 13 pages into, thir into three pages for this morning. <laughs> I didn't think you wanted to be here for three hours. But for me, it boiled down to when I was going before the Lord and all through scripture, the olive tree is symbolic of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I really feel that God has anointed us. And as in 1 John 22 verse 27, for as you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you and you don't need anyone to teach you. Instead, his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and not a lie just as it has taught you, remain in him. You see, God laid foundations over the last two leadership teams, under Kevin and Debbie and under Richard and Sheila, and we documented those last week. See, the Holy Spirit is in each one of us, and the foundations have been laid. See, if we remain in him, we will be strong pillars of wisdom, and insight, discernment, but we will be able to do this with tenderness. Again, I feel that this will lead to peace and reconciliation within the church, the broader church, the local church, the city, and the nation. See, in Genesis 8, verse 11, when the olive branch was actually brought to Noah, it was actually alive. It wasn't a dead one that, that was saved and that God brought an, a live olive branch to show a new beginning. 
and God is bringing a live olive branch now. This is a new beginning for us. Also, we've been dealing a lot and going through the book of Haggai. It's actually in Zechariah 4 that God speaks to Zerubbabel and to Joshua again, and he, he tells them that they will be olive trees. It's quite a long passage, and it's very, very interesting. But the Lord encourages them not to trust in might or power. And I think that's quite significant for us as North Hills, that we don't need to trust in a military force, and we don't have to do this forcefully. God is advancing his kingdom. And power is often related to finances. We don't have to worry about that. We gave all ours away. Um, so God is going to open his storehouses. We don't have to trust in finances. He's got this. We don't have to fight for any of our resources because the resources are you and I. The rest of the things God promises, he will sort out. Again, God is reminding us of his faithfulness. In Hebrews 13, 5 again, he says, I will not relax my hold on you. He is the God of the beginning and the end, and he's not finished with us yet. He's just beginning what he has planned for us to do. It might not look like that to you, but the atmosphere is changing and the Holy Spirit is brooding up over us. God is asking us not to hold back. I want to close with a song from Vertical Worship. It's called Not Done Yet. And on the screen, you're going to see Richard's, uh, Sheila's prophetic picture of the yachts. And while the song is playing, I really would ask you to prayerfully consider what God is doing in your life. What is he breaking? What is he rescuing you from? What mountain is he moving? What chains are being broken? What ship do you have to burn? What is he showing you that is ahead? What is God up to in your life, in this city, in this church, in this country? Consider our ways. Thanks, Mary. Amen, Debbie. That's uh, what a wonderful word. Um, thank you so much for that. And uh, um, yeah, it's uh, an incredible encouragement for us this morning. Um, there have been a, a few contributions uh, uh, that, that um, have come through and a few guys wanting to share, which I'm very excited about. Uh, uh, we, we had on Facebook Live, uh, Amy Eddington joining us from PE. Wonderful to have you with us, Amy, and uh, she joined us this, um, before their service started this morning. But she said she just, uh, I just wanted to confirm what Deb said about no financial concerns. Matthew 17 verse 27 says, go to the sea and cast a hook and take the first fish that comes up. When you open its mouth, you will find a shekel. Take that and give it to them for me and for yourself. Just the sense that NHC will find provision in the most unexpected places, but it will require steps of uh, seemingly crazy things, um, a, spiritual, a spiritual sense. I also sense God is going to bring about a first time success, the first fish you catch as you step out in obedience. So thank you for that, Amy. Wonderful 
encouragement for us as a community. Um, yeah, that was a brilliant word, Debbie. Thank you. Uh, I just uh, want to invite uh, Sarah to jump to jump on. Then um, uh, yeah, Rose can then Rose can can come after. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, uh, breezy. So um, please don't mind my um, <laughs> the marks on my face. Benny said I must reassure everyone is not beating me. It's from the masks and stuff at work. So um, it may sound, I, I felt this word um, actually while, uh, while we were having worship, um, and it may almost sound contradictory to what Debbie shared in some ways, but I actually think it's an important rider. So uh, last evening we were having a very difficult uh, conversation with Jeremy, and I've got his consent to share the story with you. Um, and we were having to try and, and address a, a, a behavior issue. And the temper started to fray a little bit and we all got a little bit tense. So as the, the mum in the moment, I said, okay, everyone, let's just stop. Nobody talk for a few seconds. And then let's pray for a little while together. And Jeremy looked at me and he said, mommy, I don't want to pray. I'm too angry. And, and I just looked at him and I said, you know what, my boy, this is exactly the time to pray because God is not afraid of your anger. And I just wanted to encourage all of us, you know, as we go through that process of dismantling the boats and using that wood to build something new in our lives, it's very real that there may well be pain. There may well be anger. There may well be frustration. There may well be disappointment, even bitterness and resentment. And the solution to those is not to, to, to push them out into the sea and set them alight because that doesn't actually get rid of them. The solution to those is to take those feelings and put them at the seat of the throne and say, you know, just, and the, this uh, encouragement that I had for the church was actually sparked by what Brian shared before the service started about God sees us. Drink from the well of God who sees us. And God sees us. He sees our very real emotional reactions to what is happening around us, anxiety, depression, fear, all of those emotions, God sees that. And, and the well is actually the solution to that. And so I want to encourage all of us, take those feelings to God in prayer. When you're feeling angry, when you're feeling bitter, when you're feeling disappointed, when you're feeling frustrated or anxious, go to God with that feeling and say, God, I'm angry. Even if he is the recipient of your frustration. And that is where we get true freedom and we can take the material from those boats and build something beautiful. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, that's a wonderful. Um, it is definitely, as, as we go through this journey, I think you, you're absolutely right. You know, as we go through this journey of, um, of seeing the, the, the new thing that God is doing, there, there's always a, a tearing away that that the, that um, beautiful grape honey that we heard about doesn't come without them being crushed. And in that moment, there, there's uh, of course going to be things that we are feeling and experiencing that that, that God is encouraging us, I, I do believe, to take to him. So thank you for that. Rose, go for it. Yeah, Debbie was speaking about us inviting people to sit under our fig tree. And this morning when I was praying about the meeting, I just, um, yeah, I saw all our yachts out on the, on the sea. But God just reminded me that there are so many people left on the shore. There are people that we work with, our families, and people that are even in our connect groups that are not in their yachts on the sea. And I just felt that God was saying, invite them onto your yacht, teach them how to rig the sails, teach them how to scrub the decks, teach them the things that he wants us to teach them so that they can get onto their own yachts and be part of this flotilla that God is uh, maneuvering in the waters of North Hills Church. Lovely, Rose, thank you. Awesome. Um, yeah, um, uh, I'm just looking for them on the screen. The allies, uh, uh, Sheila, do you want to do you want to jump in? Sheila, God laid something on her heart. Would you like to share that now, or just got to unmute yourself if you don't mind? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I joined worship. I had this picture. I don't know if you can see. It's of two sparrows um, on the ground. Can you see? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So um, it just ties in what everyone's been speaking about God's provision. I felt like there, um, just on an individual le level, there might be some of us who just really are concerned about um, just God's provision in many ways, whether it be financial, physical things, or even spiritual things, the ability to do what you ask and what God's asking us to do. And in Matthew 6, it speaks about not worrying about what God has for us. And they I tell you, do not worry about your life. Um, and what you'll eat or drink or about your body, what you wear. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And I just felt such a, um, um, a comfort and a reassurance from our heavenly Father that he's got this, that he's got us, and he's got all that is required of the season of us, um, even if it does look a bit scary. Um, and um, I just felt for um, Sonia and Louis, and I don't know if you still, I can't see if I can see, I saw you earlier. Yes, there you are. I just felt particularly that this was for you. Lou, I know you are a birder, um, but I felt that God saying, he's got this. I really felt that that picture is for you particularly as well as for everyone else. And just to remind you that um, he's got this, he really does. And during worship, there were sparrows out in our view and they were picking up the dog hair and um, all the bits making nests. I feel like God's got every single thing that you need for the season ahead of you, both within you and around you. And I feel like you're going to see the gracious hand of God in this season like you've never seen before. I feel like he's almost going to show you his father heart. Um, almost like you're comfortable with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but God is going to show you his father heart and how he loves you as his boy. And um, you're going to see it in such a practical way. I feel like you are a practical guy. You, you like to see things, and God is going to just reveal to you very practically that Louis is going to know that he is a child of God. Sure. Wonderful. So beautiful word. Thank you, Sheila. Um, Brian, something to share if I can? Yes, jump in, Melly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Morning, everybody. Morning, visitors. Lovely to have you. Um, the words of Shirley's second song that she, she sang um, go, I'm surrounded by the arms of the Father. And when we actually give our lives to Jesus, the song goes and says, His blood runs through our veins. And in situations that we actually have in our lives, when we come to Him and we ask, He says, I split the sea so I could walk right through it like he did for the Israelites. So if you're having a situation in your life right now, that's what you need to do. You need to go to the Father. You need to ask him for help. And he will split that sea. I mean, that's an awesome picture that you there's this massive sea in front of you and you can't see how to get over to the other side because that's where you need to go. Ask him. He will split the sea and you can walk through on dry ground. And then if you have fear, he says, your fears are drowned in perfect love. As you come to the Father, as you press into him, his love drowns out the fear, the fear of the world that is pressing around you. And he rescues, my, rescues us and he rescues me so I can stand and sing that I'm a child of God. Wonderful, Melly. Thank you. Um, um, Matt, uh, um, Matthew Wright, Matt, I just wanted to uh, encourage you, man. I just, as, as we were praying just now, um, uh, I was just reminded of uh, a, a particular uh, verse I read yesterday, two verses, Isaiah 44, verse 1 and 2. And this, is, this kind of message is repeated many, many times throughout the scriptures. It says, now listen, Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. This is the word of the Lord, your maker, the one who formed you from the womb. He will help you. Don't fear, Jacob, my servant, the one who I have chosen. And, uh, and I just felt an encouragement for you, just a, a, a confirmation, a reminder. Again, as God says this over and over, he says, listen, I know you. I've chosen you. I have I actually formed you. I made you who you are and, and I've appointed you to do what I've called you to do. And I just felt it it was an encouragement for that. And and I was just reminded again of Acts chapter 17 where um uh where uh verse 26 um where where he says that God has has uh he's made 
he's made every nation, he's made the whole earth, and he's de determined their appointed times and the boundaries of where they will live. He knows exactly where you are. He knows your story. He knows, uh, he knows you so intricately and intimately, and he knows that for a purpose. There's a purpose in that. And I just yeah, I felt to, to encourage you with that, 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 that God sees you, he knows you, he's given you what you need, um, and, and his purpose and plan um, will prevail in your life and uh, in the, the things that he's called you to. So, yeah, I wanted to share that with you. Um, hello, I see your hands up. Go for it. Um, hi, Matt. My name's Sheila. I just thought God wants to encourage you that there's beautiful fruitfulness in your life. I had a picture of um, a rose farm, that you're someone who isn't, you're not just what, the equivalent of one rose bush that um, produces, but I feel like there is a fruitfulness about you that is far reaching. And you have the ability to reach many. And I, and I was reminded of roses that get, get sent out for export. And I believe that you have, um, God has got things way bigger than just your current sphere of influence. That God really wants to expand your horizons. I feel like gifts that he's placed in you are, are export quality and worth um, going way beyond just um, your current thing. And I feel like God's going to open up doors of opportunity that are going to literally come across your path to encourage you and to just step out and um, that which is within you is going to come out and it's going to be beautiful and it's going to bring so much um, to so many people beyond your current sphere of influence. Wonderful, wonderful. That's awesome. Um, uh, Keith, I see your hand. Neil, uh, Neil and uh, Sharon uh, uh, put their hand up. Neil, Neil, was that you, uh, I think? Uh, do you want to jump in? And then Keith, you can... Jump in uh, after that. Thank you. Yeah, Brian, just to uh, uh, carry on from the scripture that you mentioned earlier this morning before we started. I actually read that this morning as well. And just to add to what Sarah said earlier as well, um, the, it, the basis of which Hagar speaks when she uh, names God, Elroy, um, was from a position of she expected to be killed by God but uh, so she actually said but God actually saw me and uh, it wasn't her that was seeking God it was God that sought out Hagar and uh, just a, a feeling that uh, as Sarah was saying at times we feel we can't come to God because of maybe our anger or our attitude or whatever it is but it's God who seeks us out it's it's his grace that comes to us and uh, we must come to him and realize he sees us because of his grace and causes his love towards us. Wonderful, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Keith, you want to go for it? And then uh, Laminis can jump in after that. Thank you. I to add on to a word for Matthew. Um, Matthew, I saw you trying to put on armor, almost like David put on um, Saul's armor before he went to face Goliath. And I feel God saying this, do not put, try and put on the armor that's in front of you. Whatever you need to face what you are facing, he will provide for you. So don't try and put on armor that is not suited for you. Um, just like he provided for, for David, he will provide for you, yeah. So, uh Clinton and Annie, I just loved you guys sitting there with your sunglasses on. <laughs> and um, no, no, you can keep them on. I think it's so cool. And it's part of what I want to say. Um, uh, so you're obviously sitting outside. You've got the glare of the morning sun in your eyes. <laughs> and I just kept looking at you and thinking of that saying, my future is so bright, I've got to wear shades. <laughs> and um, I just felt like... Um, I, I know that often um, the easy uh, encouragement for you guys is, you know, that God has got amazing things and success and great influence and all of these amazing things. And I, and I definitely testify and agree with all of those. But this morning I just was struck by, by a future in you, for you guys as a family in the brightness of God. Um, you know, there's that beautiful uh, scripture that really encouraged me this week for the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Um, but in, in, in Revelations, the eyes of the Lord are described as sort of these balls of bright fire. Um, and that actually 
I want to I want to prophesy over your family that the presence of God and the spirit of God over your family would be like such a bright burning fire that you got to wear shades. Sure, brilliant, wonderful. Thank you for that, Sarah, and amen. I haven't heard that saying before. The future is so bright, got to wear shades. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to claim it from now on. <laughs> Lovely. No, good one, guys. Um, I think uh, if, yeah, I don't know if anybody has uh, any closing thoughts. Otherwise, I'd love to just uh, close in prayer. And, um, but uh, before I do that, uh, just a reminder, uh, we, while we obviously are not gathering in our normal way, there are, are, are various ways that we are connecting and that we are um, just seeing God knits us together as a community. And, and uh, one I would just really like to highlight is our Thursday uh, evening prayer time. Um, it's it's such a, a, a I think it's such a, a, a connecting and a unifying thing when we can pray with somebody. What a, a beautiful thing it is to share uh, with uh, with somebody else. And so um, we've been doing prayer in many different ways. I know as a council culture, we've we've uh, this last week we did a um, on our council culture group we did a, a chat and we're sending voice notes and chats and we for for that time slot we were just praying on the group together. And it was a wonderful time, actually. We've done a video, um, WhatsApp video chats. We've done one-on-one calls and like prayer chains. And I'd really encourage you just to be pressing into those times of prayer. I think um, more and more, we're going to be seeing the importance of prayer in our lives and in our community. And uh, that's something that we, we need to continue to invest in and press into is, uh, is praying together. And um and uh, so if, if you haven't joined one of those times, please do uh, try and join. If you're not sure how to join, um, if you're not part of a connect group, uh, please contact um, the office, Tess at the office, and she'll uh, help connect you. There are people who are contacting others who, who aren't part of connect groups. And, um, and so they are um, connecting yeah, in that way. And then also just to, to remind us, um, uh, the the um, what Tim felt in his heart to to start a while ago in terms of um, uh, us gathering food and supplies and and being a blessing in the community I think is is such a, a an incredible um, testimony at this time where people are in need and are struggling and just being able to to share with those uh, with those around us is an absolutely beautiful thing and I think it represents um, the heart of God so well. And so Tim is is uh, is still going. We, he's still collecting um, collecting food, and uh, that is uh, non perishable food, um, and is doing a wonderful job. And and actually building relationship. It's not just like oh we you know here's a handout. God bless you. But we're actually connecting and building relationship with people, being able to pray with people, and it's a wonderful doorway to minister into people's lives. So uh, if you want to contribute to that, please just chat to Tim or uh, test at the office as well. Um, other than that, um, we have a, um, a leadership development time that is happening. Uh, uh, it's, it's coming up on the uh, 12th of, that's two weeks time, and it's an evening, an hour and a half. And, and what it is, uh, we've called it a, a 3E leadership moment where we are uh, encouraging each other, equipping, and, uh, and, and building vision, envisioning uh, each other um, in our journey with the Lord. And, and if you are somebody who is uh, involved in leadership in or outside of the church, um, or perhaps that's something you feel God has placed on your heart uh, for the future, um, uh, please do join us for that time. It's going to be on Zoom. But uh, if you can't make that, uh, do let us know because we have a, a, a chat group for, for that, a WhatsApp chat group. And we will share on that chat group the recording. Um, the audio recording of the meeting. So if you can't make it, um, but would like to be part of it, please do let us know. All righty. Um, other than that, I'm going to close in prayer. And then after that, we, we will uh, go into our uh, small breakout groups and uh, just yeah, enjoy connecting in a bit of a different way. For those who, who uh, on face, Facebook Live, it's been absolutely wonderful having you. There's been chats coming through. The guys have just been uh, cheering you on, Debbie, as you were preaching, um, just connecting with some of the words that have been shared. So it's been really lovely having you guys join us on Facebook Live. So thank you so much for that. And um, it's, yeah, it's, it's an absolute, absolute pleasure. Um, yeah, so let's just close in prayer and then we'll, we'll land from there. Lord God, we thank you for this way we can gather 
thank you that uh, we can, even though we are not physically together, we can be together in heart. We can be one in heart. And we just think about John 17 and how your absolute desire is for us as the church, your body, to be united in spirit and in purpose. And, and so I thank you that today as we gathered and we've been able to pray, we've been able to encourage each other, we've been able to uh, be, be uh, challenged by the word. Um, thank you that, that as we do that, Lord God, you are knitting our hearts together. You are making us one in spirit and in purpose. And even though we're far apart, I thank you that, that I can feel the, the connection, Lord God, with, with, um, the, the, with the saints, Lord God. Even those, those who are connecting on Facebook Live, thank you for them, Lord God. Thank you that we as the body can connect and join together. It is a, a privilege and a blessing, Lord, and it is absolutely a gift from you. Thank you that you don't call us just to be on our own and to find our way on our own, but you call us to journey together, Lord. Um, and so we just thank you for that and we celebrate that today. And uh, I really just pray for each person who's been able to join us and those who haven't, that they would continue connecting with you, continue hearing your voice, continue being led by you day by day. And we ask this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Awesome, guys. Uh, so we're going to land the meeting there. We'll say um, uh, cheerio to the uh, guys on Facebook Live and um, uh, to... We're going to be handing over to Mally, who will uh, break us up into our connect groups. Thank you, Mally.